Hey guys, I'm Robert, Habitat for Bats. I'm going to do a short video and show you what our kit is about, show you what uh, people get when they order it, and explain some of the design decisions that we have. When we ship a single kit, this is how it comes in a box, about this size, and the kit comes dry fitted together like this, shrink wrapped, and it has all of the pieces, parts, manual, screws, all that goes with the kit in here. Set this one to the side. Now we dry fit it so that people can actually see how it goes together, which is a lot quicker in explaining uh, how the house works versus reading a manual or looking at exploded drawings or pictures. They can take the front off. You see the tab and slot design. And the pieces that are involved. We have roof braces. We have side pieces. Have our decorative bat on the front, and the most complicated piece, and we'll go over this in a minute, are the roof pieces. Also included is a manual, a BCI bat fax card, a brochure from BCI giving them more information on how they can help, a package of screws, and something that we include that other kits don't is an actual countersink bit. It's just an inexpensive bit. We found that one of the biggest holdups for people was getting the countersink bit, going to Home Depot, spending that couple of dollars to be able to get it. Um, we included it so that it's there and they don't have to go hunt for that. Now the houses, you can already see it's fairly simple to put together, but I want to go over some of the design decisions that we made when we were making the kit for BCI. One of Dr. Tuttle, uh, Dr. Merlin Tuttle, the founder of BCI, one of his primary concerns, not just on the kit, but all of our houses, was the roosting surface. And we chose to do actual mechanical roosting grooves. They're cut in, makes a consistent surface. Unlike netting, it can never come off and tangle bats. And it also, uh, when you just rough the board up, it's not consistent. You have rough areas and smooth areas, and each house can have a different roosting capacity depending on what's in it. The next concern when we did our first kit by Dr. Tuttle was the consistency of putting the kit together. If they were going to certify one, they wanted to make sure that the kit could be assembled the same way every time with a certain consistency that would make it useful in the, on the tree or on the pole versus just a decorative pretty house, which is what you see so many of the other ones are. When it's being assembled, you simply put the pieces in Put them toward the outside. You can see a bevel here, tab and slot. Slide it up flush to the top so that you got your angle. You do the same thing on the other side. Now when you're actually assembling it, you would put some caulk in first. Once that's done, you take your front. And this is a little bit of a tricky part. You kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit. It's not hard. You can be careful not to pinch your fingers. But once that is done, the house is essentially assembled at this point. All you need to do is do your pre-drill and your screws. Now, the house really doesn't require as many screws as are in here, but as we started to do kids' programs, we discovered that there really wasn't enough for them to do. So by adding more screws, it gave them more activity. Use a simple drill. Uh, there's drills like this one that are a little more durable and expensive. Right down to drills that are 30 or $40 they can pick up if they don't happen to have one. We found that most homes do have one, or at least the husband was looking for an excuse to buy one. It gives them a good opportunity. So the kids drill out the pre-drills, and they assemble the house. They've caulked it. Pre-drill it, they put the screws in, and you get the body of the house that looks like this. Now, I mentioned that the roof was the most complicated part. This came about uh, Malia Bayless with BCI when we were originally getting the house certified. We designed the roof as you would expect it to be, with just a budded bevel. Her concern was <clears throat> that over time this could tend to open and also when people assembled it they may not get it exactly pushed together off center and it would leave a gap. That gap would leak and it would run water down inside the house. So after some thought, what I came up with was a folding design rather than a bevel peak. Best way to do this is to put the pieces down back to back so that the peaks are going up. And then all you do is you fold it 
and that makes the peak of your house. It also makes it a little easier to assemble the house. When you're putting the roof on, you take the shorter of the two pieces, you put it down and you pull it up so it's just flush with this here. And you'll have caulked it, they'll drill it, hold it in place, put the screws in. Then you caulk this piece, you put it on the same way. And what you end up with is a gap that is sealed with caulk that even if it separates a little bit is much less likely to let water just run through the house. Once we did that, uh, Malia and a couple of bat biologists, we sent them some kits, they put them together, and they were able to certify them. And to my knowledge, this is still the only kit that is certified by BCI. The decorative bat I had mentioned before, there are two small nails in here. What we let them know they need to do is to put a good amount of caulk on the back of it, something to act like a glue push it down on the house, and then they can take the two nails, and an adult can take a hammer and drive them in. I mentioned before, originally we had thought about nailing them together. We learned very quickly that hammers with eight, nine, ten-year-olds is a lot worse than just a drill with eight, nine, ten-year-olds. They tend to at least not try to beat each other with the drills. Um, that's really about it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see if I can get them answered. I appreciate your time.